So even if a many-to-many -many relationship does not seem to have an attribute, we would still go ahead and create a new entity type corresponding to it. Because as you will shortly see, you can always find an attribute for a, for a many-to-many -many relationship. Even if no attribute is currently present, it's extremely likely that as time passes, some new attribute will be, turn out to be important and we'll need to add it. So this is a very important lesson that you have. So again, we're looking at the inventory management scenario that we had. And we are now saying that this is not just a relationship, but it is an ad entity type in itself. And its attribute is quantity. So we're going to have a new entity type whose attribute is quantity. Okay, so now we can think of each of these lines as an instance of the new entity type that we are going to create. We're going to create a new entity type and quantity is the attribute and each line really represents an instance of the new entity type. Think about it. The first line here between disk drive and warehouse one, what does it represent? It represents the fact that we are storing 200 disk drives in warehouse one. This represents the fact that we are storing 150 monitors in warehouse one. Now, what does each of those lines represent? What is it really an instance of? We can think of this as being an instance of an entity type called stock. We are keeping the stock of this product in that warehouse. So many units are in stock. The quantity is the attribute. Okay because we can think of 200 units of disk drive in warehouse one as something that is conceptually different from 100 units of disk drive in warehouse two. That is one stock, this is another stock. We have stocks of disk drives in two different places. And warehouse one has again two different stocks, 200 disk drives and 150 monitors. Okay, so this each line can be thought of as an entity type in its own right. Okay, so each instance, that is each line represents the storage of a certain quantity of a product at a certain warehouse and we can call it stock. We could call it inventory. I'm just choosing to call it stock. Okay, so now we see that between product and warehouse, we have created a new entity type called stock and it has the attribute quantity. Now it would be a mistake to think of the new entity type as quantity. No, quantity is just an attribute of the new entity type. Now stock may have many other attributes as well, which are not obvious right now, but it could be possible. Okay, so this is the stuff that we're talking about. Then of course we need to worry about, first of all, the primary key for stock. Now clearly, product ID alone cannot be the key for stock, nor can warehouse ID, because stock is of a particular product in a particular warehouse. Okay, therefore, the primary key for stock can be product ID plus warehouse ID. The combination can be the primary key. In other words, we are saying we've got 200 units of disk drives in warehouse one or some such thing here. Uh, that's what this diagram shows. 200 units of disk drives in warehouse one, 100 disk drives in warehouse two, right? So once you mention both disk drive and warehouse, both the product and the warehouse, then the stock becomes unique. You can ask a question, how many of product X do we have in warehouse Y? You can say, well, you have 200, you have 100, whatever the quantity is, right? But if you just say product, then you don't know, the product may have stocks in many warehouses. So you don't know what to answer. If you just say warehouse, well, a warehouse has stocks of many different products. Which product are you talking about, right? But the moment you mention the combination, product and warehouse, then you're talking about a unique stock. So the combination of product ID and warehouse ID could be the primary key for stock, okay? So the first thing we are talking about is, well, that is all great. We've got a new entity type, sounds fantastic, but what kind of cardinality notation do we put on? So first of all, let's talk about the cardinality notation between product and stock. So we 
Of course, as usual, we need to think about what is the degree of the relationship. So given a product, how many stocks can it have? Given one product, how many stocks can it have? So again, I go back to this diagram. Take this graph. How many stocks does it have? Well, we can see from the diagram that a disk drive can have two stocks. It has two stocks, 200, 100, 200 in warehouse one, 100 in warehouse two. Okay, so we can now go back and look at and say, well, at most, how many stocks can a product have? We've already found out, could be many, because one product has many stocks. And now looking at it from the point of view of stock, how many products can a stock be related to? Take any stock, which is a line from our previous diagram. If you take it a particular line, obviously the line can only connect to one product. Right? Each line connects one product to one warehouse and therefore every line is connected to only one product. Therefore, each stock is related to just one product. And therefore, this is as usual, a one to many relationship. The next question we worry about is the participation. At least how many stocks must a product have? We know that the answer is zero because a product, we may be completely out of stock for a particular product. And therefore, product is non-obligatory. At least how many products must a stock be related to? Well, given a stock, you're saying this is a stock of 200 disk drives in warehouse one. Clearly, you can't say this is a stock of no product. It has, if there is stock, it must be of some product or other. And therefore, every stock has to be related to one product. And therefore, participation of stock is obligatory. Okay, so if you put all this together, we get this. <clears throat> Notice that I've also added in the key migration notation here. Why did I do that? Because we've already discussed that the primary key for stock is product ID plus warehouse ID. So clearly, we need to have key migration to indicate that product ID is part of the key for stock. So that's why you've got the key migration. Now let's look at the other side of the relationship. Now the crow food is here because it's a one to n <coughs> and it's a dashed line on the product side because product is non-obligatory and it's a solid line on the stock side because stock is obligatory. Now let's look at the cardinality notation for the other side between stock and warehouse. At most how many stocks can a warehouse have? We already know that a particular warehouse may have stocks of many different products, so it's n. At most, how many warehouses can, can a stock be related to? We already know the answer is one, because one warehouse can have, uh, one stock can be connected, obviously, with at most one warehouse. In fact, it must be connected to one warehouse, because a stock is nothing but stock of a particular product in a particular warehouse. So the moment you say stock, you're talking about stock in some warehouse or other, so it's one. And therefore, this is again a one-to-many relationship. Once again, we look at participation. At least how many stocks must a warehouse have? We know that it's zero because a warehouse could be empty. At least how many warehouses must a stock be related to? We know the answer is one. Because the moment you have a stock, it has to be in some warehouse or other, so that's one. And therefore, we've got warehouse doesn't have to participate in the relationship. It can be empty. Stock must participate in the relationship. And therefore, we get this cardinality notation for this. Okay. And now we can look at this diagram and say the primary key for stock is product ID plus warehouse ID because of the two key migration notations. Okay, so 1 to n is what shows us this crow foot. A warehouse is non-obligatory, so you've got the dashed line. Stock is obligatory, so you've got the solid line. So that is what tells us uh, how to handle a many-to-many -many relationship. In fact, a primary key for stock, we've already talked about it. 
we've said that it's nothing but the combination of product ID and warehouse ID because we've included the key migration notation. Okay, so this stock now is the entity, new entity type that we created to replace the many-to-many -many relationship between product and warehouse. Such an entity type is called associative entity because it's an entity that represents an association or a relationship. Now the cardinality notation, interestingly, whenever you create an associative entity, that is whenever you see a many-to-many -many relationship, you will create a new entity type. You will create a new associative entity type. And the cardinality notation on the associative entity type is always the same. Crowfoot, key migration, crowfoot, key migration. Okay, now the key migrations, sometimes you'll see later on that we can make the key migrations optional. We'll discuss that later. For now, take it that the crowfoot and key migration are standard notation. Okay, crowfoot definitely is standard notation. The key migration is actually optional. We'll talk about that later. For now, we'll treat the key migration also as part of this notation. So whenever you've got a many-to-many -many relationship, two things you have to remember. One, you have to create an associative entity to model this. Even if the many-to-many -many relationship doesn't seem to have any attributes, still create an associative entity and have a one-to-many relationship from both of the other entities to the associative entity. So you're going to have crow feet. And the associative entity must participate in the relationship so the line is going to be solid, solid half lines on either side. This is standard. Whenever you see many to many, this is what you're going to do. And we can logically explain the reason for this, just like we reasoned out the cardinality notation for stock. Okay, let's take another example. Considering a Hollywood scenario here, a film studio produces many films. The studio has signed on many actors each actor might have a role on several films, say might have a role on several films, may not have any role at all, and each film must involve one or more actors playing roles. And of course, it's possible that some actors might not yet have acted in any films. That's what we mean when we say each actor might have a role on several films, but every film must involve one or more actors. Okay, so Based on that, you get this initial many-to-many -many relationship. Film, I've thrown in some attributes. Actor, thrown in some attributes. Film ID is the primary key for film. Actor ID is the primary key for actor. And then you see a many-to-many -many relationship. Crow feet on either side. Now, the line on the side of film is solid because it says every film must involve one or more actors. The line on the side of actor is dashed because it says some actors might not have yet acted in any films. So this line is dashed. Okay, so we have a many-to-many -many relationship, but of course we know that every many-to-many -many relationship has to be converted into two one-to-many relationships. In other words, to represent the many-to-many -many relationships, we need an associative entity. And therefore, we create this associative entity and we are calling this associative entity as role because role is what an actor plays in a film. Role is a good name for this associative entity. Okay, it explains the relationship between actor and film. Now, what attributes might role have? Well, it's possible that along with the role, we may talk about how much money the actor is playing, played, uh, paid to pay, play that role could be zero. What is the name of the character that the actor is playing in the film? And whether this is a lead role or not? Is it a lead role or just a supporting role? Okay, so we could have all of those as attributes of role, even though none was mentioned. But whenever there's a many to many relationship, you can always think of some meaningful attributes. Okay, so that's the new entity type. This is the associative entity type that we have just created. Now let's look at the cardinalities. Clearly, based on the cardinality notation, we can say role has to have crow feet on either side. 
and of course actor has a one to many relationship with role but an actor may not have any role so this is dashed role of course has to have obligatory on either side because the moment you're talking about a role you're talking about this actor playing that role uh, this actor acting in this film so every role has to be connected to one actor and one film and therefore the line is solid but a film can have many actors crowfoot an actor can have many roles crowfoot and the key for role is made up of the key of film and actor so key migration so that is all very standard notation